Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video, and today we're going to be talking about Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age for the PlayStation 4. This title was sent to me by Square Enix so that I could give it a look and tell you guys my opinions on it. And I got to tell you guys, I have a bit of a strange history with the Dragon Quest series. So for starters, I never really played a Dragon Quest game all that much. I played a little bit of Dragon Quest VII and a little bit of Dragon Quest VIII. And now you guys are wondering, so why didn't you actually play these games further? Because these are no doubt good games. As a matter of fact, a lot of people have told me that Dragon Quest VIII especially is a really good game. And the thing is, I always felt like the, the pacing felt a little bit off to me. And then there was another thing, which was the fact that I was playing those on the 3DS. And I always have this thing about the 3DS. If you guys have seen uh, my Moss Auto Generations Ultimate videos, you guys know that I can't play my 3DS for very long unless I'm out on the go. Usually when I'm on my house, I never feel like playing my 3DS. So that was probably one of the reasons why I never delved too deep into the, those previous two Dragon Quest games. And then the one Dragon Quest game that I actually played was not a real Dragon Quest game. It was uh, Dragon Quest Heroes 2. I've played the crap out of that one, but that one was essentially like, like Dynasty Warriors with um, RPG elements based around a Dragon Quest skin, which was all right, but ultimately it wasn't like a real true Dragon Quest game. So when I had the opportunity to uh, get myself a code for this one, I really thought about it and I was like, is, is this the one? Is this the one that's going to get me in there? And I was like, well, let's try it out. So I booted it up and I've been live streaming it for a large chunk of time yesterday. And I got to tell you guys, I actually really, really like this one. It, and it's a weird thing, and, and I'm going to get more into it. Now, one of the special things, that I think the two most iconic things about the Dragon Quest franchise, other than the fact that it is clearly a JRPG, it's been a long-running series and all of that, the two most iconic things, I think, from what people tell me at least, are definitely the art style of Akira Toriyama, as well as the soundtrack of the game, which are like some of its most striking features that just make it stand out from a lot of the other JRPGs out there. And the art style of Akira Toriyama is, it's, it's a double-edged sword for me because I really like the art style of the humanoid characters. I like the way they look. I think it's great. But I struggle with the art style of some of the monsters that are in the game. It's, it's a weird thing for me. And I know that for a lot of people, this is not a problem. And I don't think that this is an actual problem. This is a, a very personal thing uh, to me. I find some of the monsters weird. But in this game, it hasn't really affected me as much because either it's the pacing of the game, which just feels much better than any of the other Dragon Quests that I've played before, because you start the game, they are very quick about putting you into combat so that you can actually experience the combat system, and they're very quick about explaining to you what is this world, what you are doing here, what is your purpose, whereas I always felt that the previous games, sure, they get around to it, but they take their sweet time especially I think it was uh, Dragon Quest 7 just like really dragged on for a long period of time I think I played it uh, for the first time for about I don't know three hours and there wasn't even like a single combat moment and I was just like Jesus it's like, it's like it's not like I need to have combat at all times but come on it's an RPG I want to fight enemies I want to level up I want to understand how the progression system is going to be like and all of that and Dragon Quest 11 just kind of delivered that in spades for starters the story becomes interesting very early on with uh I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna get into too many story details for those of you that want to experience it experience it for yourselves but essentially you get to know your character and as your character starts to take his first steps into the world immediately interesting things start happening and you get to know this other character that shows up in the game and you then go kind of like go out and run away from this place that you were in because of reasons again i'm trying to be super vague to prevent uh spoilers which which is in a way it's kind of weird because like i mean this game has been out in japan for quite some time but I, again i don't know um how sensitive to some of the spoilers in this game some people are going to be so i'm trying to be as respectful of that as possible but ultimately what i'm trying to say is that the pacing felt a lot better both in the balance of them explaining the story to me as well as introducing combat elements and introducing level up elements and introducing gameplay mechanics all of that stuff felt much 
better in this title than has ever really felt in a Dragon Quest game for me personally. And I'm curious to know what your opinion is if you're like a Dragon Quest veteran, like seriously, let me know in the comment section so that other people can check out the comment section as well and let us know your take on that stuff. Now, when it comes to the art style as well as the visuals of the game, I felt that they were pretty good. You still suffer from a little bit of that whole JRPG thing of having the, the segmented areas. It's not really like, how should I put it, it's, it's not like a regular open world game that you see nowadays, it, it's still, it feels a little bit dated is what I'm getting at, because you know, you have like this area that's going to have some monsters and then you move on, there's a loading screen, there's another area after that, and these areas all connect together to form like the kingdom and whatnot, but ultimately... I don't think that the loading times have been terrible, at least not in my personal situation. The loading times have been pretty good. Naturally, I'm playing this on a PlayStation 4 Pro, so your mileage may vary there, but ultimately, in my case, everything was pretty much smooth in terms of loading time, so I never really felt like it's like, oh man, I'm going through this loading screen again. Uh, and I also really like the fact that you can kind of like program your characters, because a, a lot of the times, especially early on in the game, right, uh, a lot of the things that you're gonna be doing is, you, since since this is a turn-based combat game, a lot of things you're going to be doing is you're just going to hit attack and you're going to attack your enemies until they die because you're not really going to be wasting uh, precious mana on just like killing these low-level enemies. So uh, you can actually automate that whole process and just have your characters like, hey, just don't use MP and kill everything and your characters will automatically cycle through all of the enemies and kill them. So that was also something that uh, I really appreciated. I also appreciate the uh, pep mechanics. I thought that was kind of cool, although... Uh, Pep being automatic, I'm not sure if this is something that changes further ahead and you can actually do stuff to provoke the uh, the pep state, so to speak, uh, which I hope that you can get a little bit more control over it because I, I actually ran into a situation where the two characters that I, were, that I was controlling were actually alternating between pep states and I was like, wow, you guys are completely out of sync. It's like pep runs out on one, the other one gets it and I'm like, come on guys, get, get your stuff together. But uh, ultimately, I actually got to play around with the, the uh, level up mechanics uh, this time around, whereas with the other Dragon Quest, I don't think I even got that far. And I like the level up mechanics and uh, the different skills that you can get uh, and the way that you kind of progress through that as you level up, which basically you get like this uh, skill tree that has a bunch of skills. And I think that if you actually surround uh, the, the skills that have like a um, uh, question mark, you will eventually get like a, a secret skill or something. And it, it was very intuitive for me to like, okay, I want to go down this path because I want to get this specific skill for this specific character. And uh, I liked the way that the level up works. So basically all of the JRPG stuff that is there works. And um, I, I thought that it was fairly intuitive to get into. And I thought it was very satisfying to interact with. But ultimately, I, I also felt that nothing in this game, at least from what I've played so far, really breaks the JRPG mold in a significant way. So I also don't know how much of this is going to be like... Uh, a new thing to experience for players that have been around the Dragon Quest series for a long period of time. Because like I said, I myself, I consider myself to be very much a noob when it comes to the Dragon Quest series and coming into this pretty much everything feels relatively fresh. Whereas for other players, I'm curious if that is the same case, because ultimately this feels like a very by the book JRPG thing, which is going to basically live and die by its story. And so far, I got to tell you, the story has been uh, pretty interesting with the events that have taken place. And I like the characters. I like the fact that it's got uh, voice acting for a lot of the main dialogue. Not all of the dialogues are voice acted, but a lot of the main dialogues are voice acted. And there are only like a couple of lines here and there so far that I felt like, ooh, that, that one was not a very good delivery right there. But most of it has actually been uh, pretty good, so I've, I've actually enjoyed it. it. It actually surprised me that the main character is not voiced, if you take into consideration that, sure, you get to name it, but ultimately your character is very much like a pre-made character. You get to select the skills that you go down into, but he kind of has his archetype cut out for him. So I figured, you know, since you don't really get character customization or anything like that, I figured that he could have been a voiced character, but 
Again, I was also told by the people in my live streams, like, oh, it's always been like this in Dragon Quest games, your character's a silent protagonist, so on and so forth. So it's like, it doesn't bother me that he's a silent protagonist at all. As a matter of fact, like I said, I've been greatly enjoying my time with the game. And it's something that surprised me because I was half expecting going into it that I was like, man, I'm, I know that I'm setting myself up for failure because I go back and forth on Toriyama's art style and how I feel about it. I also go back and forth on the soundtrack, but I kind of feel like the marriage of everything that they put into the game, right? Like the, the main quest itself coupled together with the characters that are there and the pacing of the game. Like it was enough to kind of like get me going. And once I got started, I don't know, I think it was around the uh, two hour mark of me playing. I played it for about five hours at this point, which I know is only really scratching the surface, which is why this is very much first impressions video. Uh, um, it's like once I got to the two hour mark, I was like, oh no. This time, I'm definitely it. I'm enjoying it. I, I like, I, again, I think the most important thing for me has definitely been the pacing. I'm enjoying the pacing. I'm enjoying the combat. I'm enjoying learning how to better do the combat. I'm enjoying even the simple side quests that they do. Because sometimes in these JRPGs, there tend to be these side quests which happen to be overly cryptical and just like you just end up picking them up and never really finishing them. That happens to me on a lot of JRPGs. And on this one, haven't really gotten to that point yet, don't know if that eventually might become a thing, but at least in what I've played of it so far, all the side quests have also been uh, fairly simple to figure out what you were supposed to do. Uh, the addition of the jumping button, which I, th I don't know how many Dragon Quest games before this one had a jumping button, but a lot of JRPGs don't have a jumping button, and the addition of the jumping button is so... Um, is, is, is so kind of like weird to me that a lot of times that as I'm playing the game I forget that your character can actually jump like I remember looking at a rooftop earlier on in the game and I'm like oh there's an item in there I wonder how you can get to that rooftop and it was like staring me right in the face like oh yeah there's a set of boxes here you can just straight up jump in there and jump up on the, on the roof but uh, that that additional little bit of traversal makes the whole world feel much more organic much more satisfying to play through uh and also as i was playing i unlocked uh this uh, portable forge thing which again crafting is something that i never really did on the dragon quest game so i don't know if it's like this on the other games or if it's just something for this game but the crafting was something that i felt was really satisfying because sure you can mess it up but at the same time even if you do mess it up there might be you might be able to get some of these uh perfect pearls and if you get the perfect pearls and you still mess up the crafting of the item you might be able to go back and fix the item with using those perfect pearls which was uh something that i found really really cool the, the way that it just works which is it's, it's this very interactive crafting it just feels so much better than you're like okay i gather the materials and then i press the button and the item comes out which is what you get on a lot of other games with crafting systems and here it's actually like they give you the item and then uh, you get the recipe for the item, you go into the, the crafting station, which is a, the portable forge, and you put the materials in there, and then it's like, okay, now you have to hit these different parts of the item until you get the, uh, these gauges on the right place. And if you're lucky, you might get like a, a critical thing and you, you will get better stats for the item. If you're not lucky, you might go overboard and you might ruin a piece of the item. And it just feels so much more satisfying, the interaction, the little mini game that you get when you are crafting that I really got into that crafting system and I instantly crafted like the best piece of armor that I had for the recipe maxed out. Uh, it's that, I don't know if I maxed it out, but it was at plus three, so it was really cool. Crafted a shield, also made that plus three. Crafted a sword, made that one plus two. It's Again, it's one of those things that usually when I'm starting a game, I will never like just go into the crafting system and be like, okay, let's really min-max this crafting thing here because I'm just like, dude, I'm gonna replace this loot in like, 10 seconds or something like that. And the crafting here just felt like such a satisfying little mini game that I really got into it and I started crafting all of these items and it. it felt good is what I'm saying, which again, it was something that surprised me. But overall, my initial impressions from what I've played of this game are extremely positive, but it is one of those things. This game is not really breaking any molds from what I can tell, you know, it is a JRPG through and through. You have pretty much everything that you would expect from a JRPG, but 
If you enjoy the JRPGs, if you enjoy the Akira Toriyama art style, if you enjoy the very distinctive soundtrack of Dragon Quest, you're probably going to love this game, at least from what I can tell. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I'm probably going to be live streaming it more over on my Twitch channel. If you guys want to come and hang out there and ask me questions about um, the game. But uh, so far, I got to say, so far, so good. Really good looking game. Really fun game. Just like sometimes there's something about the beauty of simplicity because even though there are some systems in here that are complex most of it feels fairly simple and accessible and it's just something that you can focus on enjoying playing the game as opposed to being focused on how you learn the game which is something that a lot of times jrpgs tend to fall down this trap of they fall down on the trap it's like okay so you gotta really learn all of these systems before you can really enjoy this game whereas dragon quest 11 is more like okay start by doing this you having fun okay try this now that's also fun, right? Okay, now try this. You know, they do a good onboarding, a much better onboarding than I've ever experienced on a lot of JRPGs. So that was uh, a really good experience. I personally am really enjoying it. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.